idea that religion is the scaffolding that we've built our civilizations with, and now that they're built, we can just remove them. But the, I think a stronger argument is that it's the foundation. And, and one of the interesting things to me about secularism is that secularism came out of religious tradition. It didn't come out, it, it didn't birth itself. That the, the, the original seculars, all of them had religious training. They were informed by religious belief. And so when you remove these things, you fall into real utilitarianism and, and your ethical foundations become very difficult to, to ground uh, in, in a truth. And this is, this is an argument. But the, but the other argument just about the black spots, I mean, there's probably in some ways uh, human history is one big black spot. Um, but... Uh, I think one of my favorite um, uh, people, Helen Keller, said that, that the world is filled with suffering, but we have to remember it's also filled with the overcoming of suffering, that there's another side to history that's very, it's not in the books, it's not all the mothers that suckled their children, it's not all the selflessness and the sacrifice that people have done for others. Um, th those things are not written in the history books. Um, the, the Muslim sages have always looked at our, our planet as an insane asylum, and religion is the Thorazine that uh, really keeps the demons yeah. at bay. And w when, you, when you look at healthy religious societies, and unfortunately there's, it's, it's getting more and more difficult to see that, uh, and, and there are reasons for that, because in many ways um, things are breaking down, and not because of religion, but, but in fact, in the absence of religion, there's a great deal that's breaking down because religion is about community. It's about um, fraternity, not just the fraternity of the ecclesia or the jama'ah or, or that, that community, but Benny Adam, that we are the children of, we're one family. And all families have the uncle that they don't want over for Thanksgiving, but he comes anyway, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, this is just part of the human family, that there's people in the human family that are difficult. Um, but I think that the, the loss of religion, I think when it's finally gone, because our tradition actually says that atheism does win in the end in this world, when it's finally gone, I think it's going to be a very horrible world. Well, this much I'll give you. Um... When religion recedes, uh, it's not as if there's nothing. Uh, a vacuum is created, and something will fill that vacuum. Something will play the role of religion. It will function as a pseudo-religion. Right. Some secular or secularist ideology will come to replace it. It might be utilitarianism. It might be Marxism. Uh, or as I like to call it in San Francisco, soul cycle ecumenicalism. There you are. <laughs> environmentalism <laughs> it it will be it will be something it'll be whatever the latest trendy ideology is and believe me people will believe it with ferocity and passion and just as has happened with great traditions of faith there will be people who are going to be willing to do very bad things to other people in the name of this religion their pseudo religion thinking that they are doing good thinking that they are doing in a sense the lord's own work. So I think we really don't have an option of no religion, which is why we should take the question of what religion we ought to subscribe to very seriously. Uh, and we should honor, if I can quote from my own Catholic tradition again, all that is true and holy, all that is good and holy in the great uh, traditions of faith. Now that doesn't mean embracing religious relativism. That doesn't mean you think that all traditions of faith are correct. Right. I mean, if, 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 if Christians believe Jesus is the Son of God, the second person of the triune God, Muslims cannot in conscience believe that. Right. Jews cannot in conscience believe that. Right. Now, well, Paul, both, Paul actually said it was a stumbling block. A stumbling the block, Jews, that's right. And yep. foolishness, foolishness to, to the, the Gentiles. Right. That's right. So uh, the one, the, 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 it can't be true that Jesus is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the eternal Son of God, and that he's not. One of those is right and the other right. is wrong, right? They're, they're, yeah. and, 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 but that doesn't mean that someone who thinks the Christians are wrong about this or the Muslims or the Jews are wrong about this must believe that there's nothing right about the other or, or that we worship a different God. Or that we worship Be, a different because God. Because exactly. I think this is one of the important... If you look at um, uh, Shalosa, Shalosa, Shalosha, Asr, 
Akadim, which is the 13, uh, the creed of Momoinides. Uh, a Muslim reading that creed can believe in, I think, every single point except for uh, perhaps the one that says that Moses is the greatest of the prophets and, and, and the Torah will never be replaced. But all the other points about God, that no Muslim would have any problem with that creed. The Athanasian creed is, is a lot more difficult because I think there's 31 points in that creed and uh, Muslims would have a difficult time, but so would the Jews for most of those points. But... The, in, in Nostra Aetate, it's very clear that we worship the same God, and that's the Catholic belief. The conceptions of that God are different, but we're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth, the resurrector of the, of, of, of the dead, uh, the one that brings us uh, before the throne on the day of judgment, not in any temporal or spatial sense, but in, yeah. in, and, and, and who will uh, judge uh, humanity. That's the same God we're talking about. It's certainly the Abrahamic uh, uh, traditions and so this idea somehow that Muslims worship Allah and and or it's say Allah is another way that that's said very often as if it's a different God even though Ilo is the only Aramaic word that Christ Ilo Ilo Lima Lima Sabachtani you know which most Arabs could understand that because it's so close to Arabic but Ilo Elohim is is the yeah. Hebrew and the Christian Arabs say Allah for God. They call Jesus Ibn Allah, the son of Allah. And so this idea somehow that Allah is this alien God, um, it, it's, it's, it's the Semitic word. It's one of the Semitic words for God. And so I think that's important yeah. just to acknowledge that. I often make this point to my uh, fellow Christians who, who wonder or sometimes even claim that uh, Allah uh, is, not, is not God, that the M Muslims worship uh, a false god or worship a demon. Uh, as, as, as Hamza hinted uh, earlier, uh, I'm ethnically Syrian. My father's people are from Syria, uh, Christian uh, Syrians, Eastern Orthodox uh, uh, Syrians. So I grew up with my grandparents blessing us in the name of Allah. Uh, <laughs> that was just, I mean, I knew that was God. I, I, I mean, that, that wasn't an issue to me. So I, 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 was, I was a bit taken aback the first time uh, I heard uh, a Christian uh, say when I was an adult, uh, well, Muslims don't worship God, they worship Allah. And I said, well, huh? <laughs> right. so, so the Christian critique of...